Hi, I'm Anas Nasser from Intel. And uh, we hear the Zephyr booth. So what do you do with Zephyr? Yeah, well, I have been working on Zephyr for the last four years. I am uh, dedicated to the Zephyr project. I'm the, the founder of Zephyr or no? I'm not the founder of Zephyr. I am on the TEC, the Technical Steering Committee, uh, involved all with different members on different technologies and, and, and features that we are introducing into Zephyr. Yeah. And uh, so, what's the latest that's happening? So the latest now is that in one month from now, if th everything goes all right, we are going to be releasing Zephyr 1.14, which is going to be uh, our long-term uh, long support release. Uh, something we are going to use also for uh, taking Zephyr into certification, at least parts of Zephyr. Uh, and it's also a major release because there are a lot of things that happened in the last few years and most of them are being stabilized and released in this uh, uh, 1.14 coming up. So you, you, you call about it long-term support now? Yes. So how long? Well, since this is the first one and we are in, you know, experimenting and we are thinking first about two years, and uh, basically to give us time to stabilize and also drive it to certification. Once we have some level of certification, probably we will reconsider and make it a little bit longer, especially for long-term products. So this is a big uh, milestone? It is a big milestone, yeah. You've been working more than four years to get there, or what? I would say that, yes, yeah? yes, yes. We are at the right point where we actually can do that, given the community growth and the membership growth that we had over the last years and, and the, the major features that we put in Zephyr, yeah. Nice, and uh, what are you showing, for example, here? So here we are showing two things. This is yeah. showing uh, two things. One is using Zephyr in a non-MCU environment, yeah. basically using it as a guest on top of uh, an open source hypervisor. So what is what am I looking at here? So here we have Echo, Echo is with Zephyr. What did you say, Echo? Echo, yeah, so you can show it here. This is Zephyr running as a guest uh, on Linux on top of a uh, hypervisor, side by side with Linux. And it is a use case that we use. He maybe can demonstrate. Hey. Can so, about, uh, so why do you run the Zephyr with the Linux? Why do we run Zephyr in the Linux? Yeah, how, how does it help? So it helps when we, you talk about workload consolidation, where you want to yeah. consolidate different workloads coming yeah. from different operating systems. So you may have systems that are of workloads running on Linux, uh, it being half real time or soft real time, or even a very more, like a much more generic function, like doing artificial intelligence, doing uh, more intelligence human machine interactions. But then you may also need to consolidate on the same physical platform or workload that is a bit more, or much more real time by nature. So what we mean by that is when you have uh, latencies requirements that are like in the microseconds or even below that. And so Acorn is there to help you consolidate these different requirements and platforms onto a single physical hardware. And so it, it creates a partition at the hardware level where you have a very isolated virtual machine that in this example is running the separate project or real time OS. The one that guarantees you these uh, small response times and real-time characteristics. And Acorn allows you to then run on the same platform, just alongside um, a, a Linux virtual machine that can be doing, in this example here, we're doing object recognition on a video stream. So this is what we're showing here. And all running concurrently with Zephyr. So, so is, are, are they both running on the same x86 yes. chip? It's the same processor. And we just partition the different cores, and we partition the different resources on the machine. And um, so this is one of the, the uses for Zephyr is to go in this direction. This is one of the use cases, new use cases for Artuses and, uh, and, and for open source software in general. Consolidation and putting multiple workloads on, on the same hardware. This is very interesting for industrial and automotive. And Zephyr is trying basically to fit in this space as well. And it's uh, it's special or interesting to be able to run multiple OS at the same time on the same chip? Yes, because this, this is actually gives you control and it gives you also scalability. You can just start additional you know, guests when you need them and you have full control. It's not running on separate hardware. This is like interesting in consolidation uh, in the car, for example. ECUs, instead of having multiple ECUs, you can actually do all of that on one single piece of hardware. Yeah. And uh, what is this? 
So this is this is an audio uh, uh, processor, uh, audio DSP. Uh, its its uh, code name is Two Creek from Intel. And this this part here is the microphone array. My microphone, you know that very well. Yeah. It's it's running an Extensa uh, chip uh, from Cadence, and it basically does the audio processing on on uh, on Zephyr, and sends that to Alexa, yeah, using a Raspberry Pi. So basically, and send basically the audio comes back through Zephyr as well. So it's showing here that Zephyr is not just a sensor. IoT type of uh, 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 application. You can also do audio processing, and this this this, this demo here has also uh, 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 audio processing or commercial audio processing uh, middleware that does echo canceling and a few adv uh, advanced audio features. Yeah. Nice. And uh, then later in the video, I'm going to introduce some of your other co uh, colleagues around here doing. Uh, there's a lot of different chipset companies yes. that are partnering in this, right? Yes. So we have NXP here, and they are demonstrating uh, uh, multi-core. So basically using, uh, uh, op uh, not OpenAB in this case, but uh, RB message light to communicate between uh, different cores uh, running, uh, running Zephyr. And showing basically the communication on the screen though. So we can, we can have a little bit more details there. Uh, over, over there we have Nordic showing their new chip. Uh, NRF91, which has LTEM chip and uh, used for IT and has uh, uh, various use cases in the IoT space. So we can we can go there if you want. They are getting. Uh, Let's all jump over here. here. Let's go to Nordic. Nordic. Yeah, well, it's crazy. Hey. So we have uh, uh, hey. an interview here on the spot. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Are you yeah, ready? sure. Yeah. yeah. You can talk about hey. them now. Hi, so, okay, hi, yeah. so who are you? <laughs> hi, I'm Joel Stapleton, I'm a product manager at Nordic Semiconductor, but I work with the Zephyr project, I represent Nordic on the board. What is, and what here, are you here? Here we have a, uh, a gaming mouse. Uh, this is uh, some plastics developed by one of our partners. Is it on the market? It is not on the market, it will be a reference design from Nordic. But as so it runs today, Zephyr on the mouse? It does run Zephyr on the mouse. So. Uh, this particular unit can do proprietary connections or it can do Bluetooth low energy standard connections to the laptop hardware here. So this is running, running the mouse through Bluetooth low energy. Or you can connect it with a USB cable. So and it'll switch cleanly from, from Bluetooth low energy to USB. And it's a very high resolution sensor and we can do very high report rates with this. Uh, a one millisecond report rate to a laptop and uh, one millisecond report rates over USB. So all the, all these stacks are the open source from the open is source. Is it an Cortex M33? No, this is a uh, Cortex M4F. Yeah. So this is our NRF52 series inside this product. NRF52. NRF52, yeah. So it's already a uh, huge quantity. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is one of your best selling parts? Or? It is. It is. It's the highest running part. We have. Five devices in the series today, uh, ranging from small kind of uh, low flash devices up to the higher end that run multiple protocols like Thread and Zigbee and Bluetooth Low Energy. So, why do you want to run Zephyr in the mouse? What is it going to bring? So, <clears throat> if you think about a mouse manufacturer or a, a hardware manufacturer doing a product, very wide product line, then they have a challenge that these are very simple applications, but they need to release maybe 15 products a year. And uh, to develop at with the on top of the RTOS services or the services offered by the RTOS, they can reuse so much of their application code over and over again, and they only need to test the applications as they change them between hardware. When you have to develop something bare metal without the use of an RTOS and without the services of the RTOS, then doing that many products a year, uh, you can get into trouble with uh, with your reusability of code, test, and quality. All right. So so, but the mouse is not just like. Pointing a, an arrow around, that's it, or more? It is. No, 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 it is. But doing it at a high report rate with a high resolution sensor and uh, over USB and over wireless, that starts to be a real time problem. Yeah. And that's why you need an RTOS. Yes. And do many mouses have RTOS? No, uh, it would. Well, I don't know, but uh, I do know uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of the hardware will run bare metal, as they say, so without an RTOS. But like I said, as as uh, design cycles are shortening and products are being rolled out faster, it's more and more important to write less code every time you do a new product, and this is a way to do it. Cool, awesome. All right. Yeah. What is this one? So this one's uh, the NRF 9160. That's an NBIT and LTEM device. 
Uh, this is the chip here. It's actually what we call a system in package. It is um, power management, uh, RF front end for all the supported bands of LTE, MNB, IoT, and uh, modem chip with an application processor. So you can do a system on chip, low power system on chip design just with this uh, this silicon here. Is it a Cortex M? This is a Cortex M33. Yeah. M33. This is. A that's one of the new ones. Yes, that's right. So this is brand new silicon. This is uh, going to production in the, in the coming months. And uh, so it has all the security stuff that's new in the M? That's right, yes. Yeah, so so, so how does it Zephyr get into that? How so there's that? been work recently on putting M33 or ARM V8 support in Zephyr. So it's possible to do secure and non-secure callable functions. Uh, and uh, the device or the implementation of the M33 architecture requires you to do a um, what we call a, um, or a security uh, unit, which is more than an MPU. It actually secures uh, memory and peripherals. So we've got that implementation there, and when you boot into this uh, device, that security perif peripheral will configure, uh, verify the images on the device, and also configure the non-secure regions for the non-secure application. So you have this separation between secure region and non-secure. The crypto libraries, for example, will run in the secure region and talk to the crypto uh, accelerator hardware uh, from the secure region. So is Nordic one of the first to do an M33? We were actually, I think, the first to announce publicly that we were doing an M33, but we weren't the first to put it uh, into production. Somebody <laughs> else's? But, it, but that, those products were without a radio, so this is a, this is a much more complex uh, like product. It's like a microcontroller SOC? Yes, it is. Can you call it? Uh, not SOC, you call it... Uh... A system in package. But it does have an application processor, so you do not need to add another chip. Yeah. You only need this chip, it will run both the application and the modem. And everything you need is in package, apart from the SIM card, which is over here, and the antenna. So this is an antenna here? It is. And why is it long like this? Uh, basically, have it being able to have debug headers and the debugger circuit here. So So how much is, uh, is this? Uh, it's coming soon. Uh, it's it's available now from distribution. The exact price tag I can't tell you right now. Ah, <laughs> I so haven't it looked. Shipping. It is shipping. This this kit is shipping, and this is production silicon. Production silicon shipping. NRF ninety one sixty with Zephyr, yes. and uh, Zephyr is just the best to use on this, right? Absolutely. Well, we really believe in the project. It's multi architecture. It's multiple platforms. Builds on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Um, it's very scalable. So this is another thing. Um, these products, there's going to be more complex applications on these types of products. So this is a bigger flash memory device, a lot more RAM, but you can run a, this one has a mega flash, yep, and 256K of RAM, and this mouse product can run as low as 192K of flash and 24K of RAM. So the scalability that Zephyr allows, uh, you can use more of the RTOS or left, less of the RTOS based on the complexity of the application. So you, kind of, uh, you can choose and build how big the Zephyr you want? Yes, yes, it goes as as shown here, also like the micro bit, for example, running uh, Zephyr with Bluetooth mesh with 16K of RAM. Mm -hmm. This guy here, also running, uh, running this? Zephyr. This is a, a badge that is running a Nordic uh, NRF52, does Bluetooth and has Bluetooth mesh. It was produced for the Zephyr project by Phytech. And it has our software running, fully supported with Zephyr. And there are plans actually to add uh, uh, expansion guards, you know, for different technologies, uh, being able to have uh, different chips here. So actually, I don't have it right now, but you can have an NXP module or an NRF or ST Micro. And sorry, what, how can you put the modules? I don't have it here right oh, now. But, but does uh, it go yeah. under here or uh, somewhere else? Yeah, uh, uh, what's his name? Johan. Johan. Yes. Let's go to Johan. Let's go. when he's added most of the. Johan, you have the... No, where is the other one? Yeah, with, yeah. The, with the NXP or with the... Most I, I don't have one with oh, the... I don't have it. He doesn't have it, yeah. Well, what is yeah. That, the other latest stuff maybe he can talk about? Yeah, he's our Bluetooth expert, yeah. You yeah. interviewed him last year yeah. as well. Yeah. So what's and the latest with Bluetooth? Is like even better than last year or what's going on? Of course, it's getting better every year. So what's happening? Uh, well, we are improving the existing uh, Bluetooth mesh support that we have. We have added new features from Bluetooth 5. Um, the Bluetooth 5.1 specification was released just very uh, recently, I think in the past month or so. 
Uh, 5.1 specification? 5 .1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's new with 5.1? Uh, there's something called uh, direction finding. So you can uh, figure out uh, which direction the signal comes from. And you can do, uh, for example, implement some asset tracking use cases uh, like that. So, so it says uh, Bluetooth mesh badge. Yes. So is that what you have? It does mesh. Yeah, so we have all of these uh, badges in the same uh, Bluetooth mesh network. And, and a little battery kind of runs the thing? Uh, there's, there's a AAA battery at the back of it, yeah. And then uh, it meshes around to do what? Yeah, so if I press a button, let's see, uh, Anas, is your badge enabled? So if I press a button here, then you can see that it's... Uh, oh, you're pinging we can, everybody we, else. We can, we can say it next okay, to okay. each other. Yeah. Okay, you, you press the button now? All right, and, and everybody who has it would have it. And I'll press yeah, the like Kate there yeah. would have it. Uh, I see you also blinking. Uh, yeah. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so it works. It's stable. The whole mesh is not. It's complicated to do a good mesh, no? Mesh is uh, like the the main thing people are talking about. Also, sure. Blue the mesh is quite different from that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's stable. We've had. I mean, we've had it available ever since the specification came public. So. Uh, that was one and a half years ago, so we've had also lots of time since then to improve it and to make it stable. So it should be pretty good by now. Cool. All right. That's awesome. And uh, it's working super stable with the Zephyr. Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, that's... Is uh, Zephyr I mean, the best way to do Bluetooth Mesh? Well, we were the first open source implementation uh, of Bluetooth Mesh. There are actually not that many uh, yeah. around. Uh, I, I cannot say if it's uh, the best one since I haven't actively tried many, many others, but there are many people using it, and we've had lots of time to, to make it good and stabilize. Cool. And, well, what else is happening uh, here? Is it NXP? Uh, are you filming now, or you're, it's only when the light is on when you're filming? Yeah, it's, it's still filming, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> still filming. Yeah, cool. So I'll, I'll uh, try to add some more just later. Okay. 